Hello, my friends. This is Lada from Astrolada. And today I have a brilliant astrologer, professional meditator, creator, Brian Coulter with me for the biggest event of the year, the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. We're bringing to you this video with a fantastic meditation by Brian that will not be interrupted by us right at the peak of the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. Hello, Brian. Hello, Lana. Good to see you again. I'm happy so to be here. Yeah, I'm so happy you gave the idea about this event for us to create. We'll explain first to people about Jupiter and Uranus from evolutionary astrology perspective, and then we'll pass into the meditation. But can you tell me, maybe many of you already know, Brian, how did you fuse astrology and meditation? Yeah, great question. And if you want to just skip right ahead to the meditation, we'll put a timestamp below, maybe pin a comment or something at the top there. So if you want to skip all of us uh, yapping about astrology and get right to the goods, you can do that fast forward. Uh, but yeah, this is, um, this is something I've been working on for quite some time. I've been interested in uh, metaphysics, meditation, spiritual development for many years, along with my studies with astrology. And back in 2019, you gave me a beautiful opportunity to begin creating videos on your channel, which gave me wide exposure, which I will be forever grateful for because, you know, I'm a full-time uh, counseling astrologer in part because of uh, the platform you let me borrow. And that's part of your, your service to the world. So thank you so much. You so much. Um, but uh, yeah, as I've been doing that, the counseling work, you know, I've learned a, a lot about meditation from different esoteric mystery schools across the globe. We've had some private conversations about that. That's actually an area of interest for you as well. So we have this path of mysticism that we've been interested in. And I thought to myself, well, astrology is great. It can be so inspirational. It can be so confirming. It can really shed light about our purpose in a given incarnation. It can even shed light about our karmic circumstances that led us to this current state of evolution. And it can be such a powerful tool to expand our consciousness and to accelerate the rate at which we grow through a deeper understanding of not only our, our own personal chart, but what are the astrological events that are happening today that are influencing me in my own personal life, but also influencing the collective. And these planets and signs and houses, they connect to core archetypes that humans are very familiar uh, in working with. And in meditation, you can work with these archetypes directly as well, through intention, through concentration, and the power of visualization. So as we understand the astrological energy, we can use med specific meditation techniques to tap into the energy of that planet. For example, let's say in your own personal chart, you have a dominant Mars in your chart. Let's say you have like uh, Mars in its own sign of Scorpio conjunct your ascendant. It's like, uh oh, beware, you know, <laughs> cause a lot of people to run from you because of your level of intensity. But then there also be a lot of people attracted to you because of your same level of intensity. So there you have this dominant Mars in your chart, very potent, very intense signature Mars and Scorpio on the ascendant. So if you're born with that configuration, clearly the soul had a strong intention for you working with that archetypal complex of having Mars and Scorpio in that upcoming incarnation, for better or for worse. And I say for better or for worse, because there's a more powerful, positive, high consciousness, let's say virtuous expression of having Mars and Scorpio. But then, of course, there's a more destructive side of Mars, as we all know, you know, so the, the more destructive side could be uh, uh, pride, could be anger, rage, uh, fear, you know, all these stress-based emotions that are heavily associated with Mars. It's classically known as the war god, you know, the symbol of war. But then we have the high virtues of, let's say, you know, courage, bravery, willpower, uh, sovereignty, 
temerity, all these beautiful words associated with the higher octave expression of the warrior. So as we contemplate what meditations we want to practice, I have one on my channel, my new YouTube channel, Meditation Nexus, called Warrior Mode. That's the name of the meditation. And it's designed to increase the frequency and the emotional state of bravery and courage and strength within your own heart and within your own mind. There could be another form of meditation that instead focuses on the dissolving of, let's say, repressed, suppressed or repressed anger within your subconscious mind. So you know, there's ways that you can dissolve the stress-based energies of that planet as well through the power of meditation. So I've brought these two together and, you know, it, it's, um, I found it to be that these two systems, we could argue they were both born out of mysticism, but they go perfectly hand in hand. And, uh, we're going to contemplate together here. It's like, what does Jupiter Uranus mean? And that's a, that's a rather deep well. These two planets, you know, couldn't be uh, much more different than each other. They are very, very different. There's a natural tension between them. Uh, but where I want to focus on for the purposes of this meditation is where does Jupiter and Uranus get along? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, what we do as astrologers, as you know, Lada, is like we we balance all these very complex symbols, and each one of these symbols has a vast pool of meaning associated with it. So you have the pool of meaning of Uranus and the pool of meaning of Jupiter, and they're just so different from each other, but the two bubbles overlap like the center of a Venn diagram, and there is this small sliver of commonality between these two powerful astrological juggernauts, Jupiter, the king of the gods, and Uranus, the god of earthquakes and lightning bolts. And although stylistically and energetically, they're so different from each other, the common ingredient or where they get along or how they integrate beautifully and powerfully is that they're both future oriented. Mm. You know, Jupiter is uh, future oriented because it symbolizes, you know, expansion and growth and uh, the uh, the pursuit of higher meaning and understanding. It represents uh, aspirations and ideals and a vision for a better future. It's a very it's the greater benefic. It's a, it's a very positive influence, and it can get us into trouble too. But just on the positive side. It encourages us to look beyond the limitations of the present moment and strive for a, you know, a better, more abundant future. It's the planet of abundance. And its influence can inspire us with this more optimistic point of view and with hope and belief that there are greater opportunities and, and possibilities that, that lie ahead. Meanwhile, Uranus, also future-oriented, but in a very different way because it, it symbolizes invention, innovation, technology, change, the, uh, the breaking of old patterns and structures. And Uranus represents the urge for freedom, individuality, and progress. And, you know, it drives us to embrace new ideas, technologies, and ways of living that can lead to a more, you know, liberated and enlightened future. And Uranus challenges us to question the status quo and to envision a radical transformation that can propel us and society forward into new realms of possibility, because the archetype of Uranus really represents the engine that drives social change. Mm -hmm. You know, many things that are unusual today will be mainstream in 10 or 20 or 30 years because of the revolutionaries of the world, the people who are Uranian, people who are ahead of their time, that think outside the box, have uh, a natural resistance to, you know, the, the ties that bind, you know, that which controls. So the empowerment that Uranus can feel is through more freedom and individuation and perhaps more decentralization and individuation from the more controlling mechanisms of the world. So although the motivation and the style for each of these planets really is far different from each other, that's where they get along. 
It's like, how can we co-create a better future? How can we bump on this more positive timeline? So during this powerful event, which, I mean, we're recording this on uh, the 18th of, of uh, it April. Happened. It is happening Our, as we talk day on the same degree. The say one more time, Lada. It is happening already. They're on the same degree. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yeah. It's it's uh, it'll be a, a exact conjunction on the twentieth, uh, but it's basically exact now. It's been active for uh, at least a month, maybe a few more weeks than that. Like really, really strong. So it's hitting this apex over the next few days, and it'll continue to be strong until about the middle of May. So the meditation we're going to do today is very powerful to do now. It's, I call it creating a big, bold vision for our future because Jupiter likes to be daring with Uranus in the mix, you know, likes to be bold, likes to be optimistic and expand into this hopeful, better future. So the purpose of this meditation is to visualize a big, bold vision of our future, not only in your individual life, but as a collective as well. I love it. <laughs> I, yeah. I have, I'm all about the future <laughs> with my Aquarius, Sagittarius energy as well. So I, I yeah. absolutely love meditations that focus on healing the past and whatever, wounding. Oh, but future-oriented yeah. meditations. These yes. Ones, oh, I, so this energy, I don't know if others are feeling it, if they're tuned, maybe people... I started feeling it a month ago, like you said. Yes. Started buzzing. And I started having more energy than normal. I started hyperventilating at moments because I'm all fire and air. So there is no grounding in my horoscope, no water, no earth. So I've been needing to use grounding mats, to sit in the grass a lot, to uh, eat root vegetables, foods that connect you to the earth a bit more. And it's been like a rebirth. Uh, maybe not everyone will feel it so strongly, but it's hitting me straight. It's on my IC, the fourth house cup, cusp square, my moon. It's, uh, I feel it like this buzzing through my body, this excitement about the future. And I was even saying to my psychologist who said today, I have not been that excited about the future for a long time. Exactly what you explained, Uranus, Jupiter, and it's almost like a new purpose is being born in my life. And there was a renewal. And I feel you're in the Jupiter is like freeing us from things and freeing us towards something we want. I was freed from something that was kind of um, ancestral and has been with me since my birth. And it was incredible freeing. It, it was a mental state and a mental attitude that just and Jupiter and Uranus can make it fall off like that. It's not some prolonged psychological process. It can be in one second. And Jupiter Uranus is Jupiter in astrology is uh, in esoteric astrology is uh, angelic wisdom. The the mm -hmm. realms right above the Earth, the like higher astral, and Uranus is a divine wisdom, which is the Deva Chan, the realms above the angelics. When you get yeah. the two together. They're like sudden downloads, sudden realizations. Like maybe you've read and you've heard some wisdom before, but okay, you understand it. Suddenly it makes sense to you. Suddenly you realize something like you've been taken, not on the top of the forest. You've been taken with a rocket above the earth. And you see, <laughs> exactly, from the yeah. trees, you see the whole earth and the whole solar system. These are the things that I hope people, and I know people experiencing around me. And it continues, like Brian said, till the middle of May, sudden realizations, downloads. God is giving you, in his full grace, answers to questions from a higher perspective. Uh, sudden inspirations and creativity. I started buzzing. I This buzzing energy, I started drawing. There's, in Taurus, Taurus is very feminine sign, which is about beauty, art. And I started expressing all those feelings and, and, and through painting and drawing. I started working out. I haven't been trying it to do it for 15 years. Finally, I have the energy. It truly feels like a new birth. There is like a butterfly energy, a uh, butterfly out of a cocoon. Pluto mm. is the cocoon. Jupiter Uranus is this 
the butterfly is out and takes the flight for the first time and it's a new phase. Uh, now, even <laughs> talking about that, these old butterflies. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <My daughter. laughs> right on the wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how I'm feeling. The last time Jupiter Uranus was conjunct, I started my astrology business. These are new inspirations, new dreams, new visions, and all the dreams and the visions that I had around that time I started. I used to maybe not meditate like properly, but sit and envision and imagine. Uh-huh. Uh, when I looked back, I found my papers that I used to write them. Mm-hmm. And it was right on the Jupiter Uranus conjunction again. One cycle ago. Yes. They wow. have gone through double or triple or with, but that was the opening. That was the mm-hmm. opening. So, guys, this year, these two, three months now, an idea might come to you, an opening, an opportunity to study something or to go somewhere. Trips are amazing during Jupiter Uranus <laughs> year. Absolutely. Whole year as well. Like everyone says, wow, the best year, the best travel I had, educational opportunities or finding new meaning, Jupiter, finding new purpose uh, and Uranus, new knowledge that excites you, uh, that frees you from or towards and in Taurus, I see a lot of people over the next 14 years, remember, it's not just this day, envision how do you want to be free with your resources and financially? How do you want to be free from financial worries and towards financial freedom? And what will this give you? Not just like, oh, I, I need, I want to have 50,000 in my bank account or whatever. Feel during this meditation but this period now, this few mm-hmm. weeks, few days, envision it. What does this financial independence give you as freedom? Because that's where yeah. it all takes 14 years. So many people will drop out of the system and find alternative ways of money, alternative ways of sustaining. Even it might not be money. It might be some bartering system because Taurus is all about that, <laughs> about food, sustenance, resources. Uh, and... Of course, that would be freedom, uh, a lot of awareness about eating what is in the food and uh, inventions, hopefully not Frankenstein foods that they're forcing on us because that's the other side of innovations and Jupiter Uranus. It can be yeah, Frankenstein was written during Jupiter Uranus conjunction, Frankenstein. But focus mm. on the how do you want to eat? How, how what? Particles do you want to make your body out of? How do you want to feel in your body? It's Taurus. How do you want to be free to do what you want financially and so on? But this is my five five cents <laughs> towards this Jupiter Uranus conjunction. But I give the word back to you. Oh, yeah. No, that's beautiful. It, it, there's so many ways you can work with these planets. You know, I focused on the big, bold vision, which, of course, these things that you're mentioning, like you know, financial uh, success, uh, the excitement that's associated with Uranus, you can imbue those states of feeling in this big bolt vision that you want to create for yourself, you know, which is a powerful way of working with this. And uh, yeah, it's also linked to like sudden windfalls, like they've done astrological studies on people who have won big jackpots, you know, like uh, prizes in Vegas and uh, like lottery tickets and stuff like that. And they want to do astrology studies to see if they can find a common pattern. And what they found over and over and over again, maybe not in every case, but in a lot of them, a statistical anomaly was strong Jupiter-Uranus interactions. Wow. You know, the, the, the lucky planet, you know, the greater benefic, who's clearly Jupiter is a jolly Santa Claus, you know, which can merrily b- bring gifts to your doorstep, you know, and there Uranus is about sudden you know, sudden breakthrough out of the blue, expect the unexpected, boom, jackpot. Yes. So, you know what this means? Go down to your local gas station, get a couple scratchers, maybe, who knows, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. This matters as well. But for me, it was something that I've tried for years to be free from, and I couldn't, I tried in what ways I couldn't. It just suddenly, it just happened and it fell off. And I'm like, no no i'm like Mm -hmm. i'm almost like trying to get back there because i don't believe it but no it's finished it's closed it's very easy being freed from something now and being free towards something new so that's how i felt it then whoa (laughs) 
Yeah. Following excitement. I, I, I remember I lived on my Uranus line <clears throat> for a while. This is getting more into locational astrology. Yeah. Um, but I was going through a big Uranus event. I was like, well, why don't I live on Uranus too? So I moved to Thailand. You know, there's Sagittarius for you. I'm a Sag. So let's leap in and experience Uranus. And that's what it felt like energetically. It felt stimulating. It felt electric. It felt me with a constant state of urgency, you know, mm -hmm. and you will synchronistically attract when you're working with these archetypes, whether living on the planetary line or just working through it through meditation and contemplation and integration, you know, the more you get in line with these archetypes, you will synchronistically attract to yourself experiences that are Uranian, for example, in this, in this case, to where you'll attract to yourself exciting experiences that really light up your soul and will help you to individuate because experientially you'll be more in alignment with that which excites your soul instead of the person you've trained to be by culture and family you know so by following those threads of exci excitement experientially you'll automatically go more on track with let's say that that divine or soul personality the core of your being instead of more of the cultural glop stuff you know so when we do the meditation and we visualize this big, bold future, you know, I'll definitely introduce that word of excitement because we want the emotional state. The, really the power in this, uh, Lada, is you, you visualize in the meditation, but you want to feel it in the heart as you visualize, you know, so that you imbue that future, that big, bold vision you want to co-create with the energy of that emotional state. For example, excitement. Wow. And how are we going to meditate if we're feeling excited? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. It's possible. It's possible. Okay. No, That's first, first, first you get into the meditative state. All right. And then you start working with those energies. You don't go <laughs> in excited or you're know, not going to get anywhere. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> buzzing, excited. <laughs> but here I'm, I'm. Prepare. So I'll, I'll tell you a quick story of how powerful visualization, uh, visualization can be. This is a true story. Okay. Many years ago, I was studying this stuff and I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. Visualization. Okay. That's powerful. But let me test it out. I always got to test these things out. And I was like, well, what is the state of consciousness that I would like to experience that is hard to force and that I haven't experienced in a long time? And I thought about it and I said, Laughter and joy. Laughter that is belly aching laughter to where you can't control it. You're rolling on the floor laughing, literally, you know, <laughs> and tears are rolling down your face. It's such a beautiful moment that, you know, at that point in my life, I hadn't experienced it for many years. You know, it was around my Saturn return. You get the picture, you know, it was a rough time. Uh, but when I was a child, I had a lot of those experiences. So I was like, okay, I'll test this out. I would like to laugh more. So at the time I worked at Whole Foods Market, which was 30 minutes from my house. So every day I drove for 30 minutes to work and I would visualize during that drive, me laughing hysterically with my coworkers, with my meditation friends in the, in the uh, meditation group I was in with my, my family, et cetera. So I would visualize laughing hysterically with these people I love. And without too long, within maybe a week of daily practice, the visualization continued to grow in strength within my mind and in turn within my subconsciousness until it took on such power within my personality and my psyche that I started to attract to myself naturally and organically those types of situations. And sure enough, you know, within about a week or two, I started to have at work these experiences where somebody would randomly do something funny. It would hit our funny bone and we would start crying with laughter. It would happen in the meditation group. And I was like, this is amazing, right? Here I am co-creating with the divine, this beautiful experience of hilarity. But I had to eventually stop the meditation because I started to have these experiences so often that it became a problem in my life. Here I am in working in the deli of Whole Foods Market, making a, pur a burrito for this poor guy while I'm crying hysterically of laughter. And he's looking at me like I took too much acid or something before I started working. 
And we could never get to meditation in the group because we couldn't stop laughing. So I had to stop the meditation. But it, it's a powerful tool, visualization. And I do have a, a meditation designed for that called Giggle Meditation on my channel. I will do it. This was the Nexus channel? Yeah, Meditation Nexus is the name of it. Yeah. But your astrology's channel is separately. Separate. Yeah, I have a. I used to do guided meditations on my astrology videos, but now I've separated them. Um, so yeah, two different channels. But yeah, there's one called the Giggle Meditation, and I tell you, if you practice that once a day for a few weeks, you will start to have these experiences. That, that's for, that's for me what real happiness is: laughing all day long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Until you're trying to be productive. <laughs> and that's all you do all day is roll on the floor laughing and you have to stop with the visualization. But that's, you know, one way you can prove to yourself the power of the mind because we're extensions of the divine. You know, we're gods with a little G, you know, we're major creators where our attention goes, energy flows. So if we choose to create, let's say a hateful thought or emotion, and we choose to express that thousands of times over the course of a life, it grows in power within our subconsciousness and becomes part of our personality as that more hateful state. But so too, with the more positive, loving, virtuous expressions, through the power of visualization and concentration in a meditative state, we can increase the frequency of, the, of those higher states of consciousness within us. And we'll, when we do experience them again, just naturally through life, It'll become more and more powerful and it will happen more frequently. So, yeah, Amazing. let's create a big, bold vision, you know, Jupiter style, which is like pipe dream. Let's go all in. Jupiter likes to put all his chips in the middle, you know, it's like really bet big on this future vision for, for not only us as individuals, but together, because we're in this together. It's like what timeline we co-create is totally dependent on our level of consciousness as a collective so would you advise us to focus on something more reasonable say someone says well i want to make 200 dollars more per week or would you say no imagine you're already making that so think bigger or would you say people to imagine bigger than what they're comfortable with for this so here's a beautiful evolutionary question for jupiter it's how am i underestimating myself mm -hmm. Because Jupiter is always in a very positive and encouraging way, whispering in our ears, hey, you're a lot stronger than you think you are. You know, mm -hmm. even if you're a pretty confident, well put together person, Jupiter says, hey, let's expand a little bit more. You know, let's take up some more space. Let's be big. Let's be bold. Have faith in ourselves. Have faith in humanity that we can co create something better. So the bigger the dream, the mm -hmm. better it is. And ideally, that bigger sh that dream should be a little bigger than what you're normally accustomed to, to dreaming. It's like, yeah, Jupiter says, yeah, a dream. Let's make it a pipe dream, right? So make it as beautiful and miraculous as you can. Don't worry about the details about how you'll actually manifest that. It's the creation of the dream is where the prerequisite work needs to happen, you know, because you put you if you put all that energy into that image within your mind and feel it in your heart and you return to it day by day, you're strengthening that image within you and your conscious awareness over time of that future you want to create will also strengthen within you. And of course that will color your actions quite significantly moving forward. So you start to live your life in such a way that's more in accordance with the that dream actually manifesting, but then where we get more woo woo with it is synchronistically. Mm -hmm. If you meditate every day, synchronicities will abound in your life. That's at least been my own personal experience. But then also if you have a specific image and intention, synchronistically, you'll start to attract different experiences in your life that will be guiding you towards that vision that you're creating with the superpower of your conscious awareness. So the synchronicity is the breadcrumbs that the universe even leaves for you starts to be different, guiding you in that different direction. So it's a major spell of, of you know, manifestation, basically. Beautiful. Thank you so much for explaining this. My pleasure. I, I advise everyone to settle in. 
Yeah. Okay. We are in the eye of the storm these two, three days. Yeah. I hope even if you watch it later on, the energy is there. You're seeding this energy. The energy will be here for, you know, it was three months before here. It will be probably two months after for sure. Exactly. Okay. I'm going to lie down. <laughs> I'm going to switch off my... Yeah, everybody get comfortable, prepare your environment. Be a good time to pause if you need to do that. And just get in a nice, comfortable position. Take care that your spine is straight. This is the main energy channel of the body. And make any last micro adjustments and settle in. And here we go. Let's begin by focusing on the breath. Breathing through your nose. Feeling the oxygen enter through the nose and just feeling your belly and your lungs expand. And each time you exhale, you feel more and more relaxed. And breathe nice and slow. The slower the breath, the more relaxing it is. And try to match the length of the in-breath to the length of the out-breath. Deep, rhythmic, comfortable breathing. Steady rhythms with breath create steady rhythms inside. On the next inhale, bring all your conscious awareness down into your legs and feel as though you are in your legs. This is a powerful way to ground at the beginning of this meditation. And visualize a beautiful snow white color in and around your legs. And each time you inhale, that snow white color glows more brightly than before. And with each exhale, the air goes out, but the energy stays in. On the next inhale, bring your awareness into your abdomen and create an anchor point of concentration a few inches behind the belly button. And visualize a sky blue sun in your stomach. 
about the size of a beach ball. So in and around your stomach, shining in all directions around you. With each inhale, the sky blue color glows as brightly as you can visualize. And as you exhale, the air goes out, but the energy stays in. On the next inhale, bring your attention up to the center of your chest and spread your awareness throughout your entire chest cavity and visualize a pinkish white sun in and around your chest about the size of a beach ball shining in all directions around you. With each inhale, it glows as brightly as you can visualize. And begin to feel emotions such as self-love, compassion, joy. Feel it in the heart as you visualize the pink sun. On the next inhale, bring your attention up to your head center and visualize a canary yellow sun in and around your head. It's the size of a beach ball and it's shining in all directions. And visualize it as brightly as you can. Very slowly and gently, 
Allow the colors to fade. And begin to visualize a day, 10 years in the future, from start to finish. Where do you wake up? Who do you wake up next to, if anybody? Where are you living? What are you doing in your daily walk of life? And create this big, bold vision for your future. Make this perfect pipe dream. And make it as beautiful and miraculous as you can. And create as much detail as you can. And each time you return to this meditation, you can add even more detail than you did before. And think about not only what your personal life is like, but also what does this big, bold vision mean for our collective future? What is this positive, expansive, joyous, and hopeful future have in store for us? And as you visualize this big, bold vision, I will start to say some words. Those words will invoke feeling states within you and allow those beautiful emotions to be fused with this big, bold vision that you are creating. The first word is awakening. What does awakening mean and feel like to you? What does awakening feel like in the future for yourself and for the collective? Freedom. What does freedom feel like? Feel it in the heart. See it in the mind. Experience it in this big, bold vision.
expansion. What does expansion feel like in this future? Feel expansion in the heart as you see it in the mind. Optimism. Feel optimism in the heart as you see it in the mind. Abundance, experience abundance in this big, bold vision. And feel abundance in the heart as you see it with the mind. Inspiration. Experience inspiration. Experience it in the heart. As you visualize it in the mind. And imbue this future vision with inspiration. Faith. What does faith feel like? What does faith mean for you in the future? Feel faith in the heart as you see it with the mind. Excitement. What is this exciting new future that you are co creating in this very moment? Feel the excitement in the heart as you see it with the mind. The excitement in the exhilaration of co-creating this more optimistic and expansive and liberated 
timeline. And very slowly and gently, let the visualization fade from your mind. And feel as though you're in your whole body at once. Just experience and observe the sensations within your body. And visualize an electric blue color radiating throughout your entire body. Pure life force, etheric vitality. And see, feel, and hear this electric blue energy suffused with every cell of your body, energizing you. and begin to connect with the environment in which you're in and begin to shift your body ever so slightly. And wiggle your fingers and toes. And whenever you're ready, Open your eyes. She's back. Wow. You didn't float away. It was incredible. Wow. I don't know about others, but I always, when I'm trying to manifest and visualize, always career astrology this time it was all about my family finding the right place having an incredible garden fruit and uh, organic farm and garden how the kids are very passionate about working in it we're homeschooling and and oh my like, that sounds great such things why and then i remembered oh it's happening right on my fourth house cusp. <laughs> I'm like, I'm imagining pensioners. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm like, family, fruit gardens, flower gardens, that they work. Ah. <laughs> That's actually really good that you mentioned that because, you know, even, uh, you know, the meditation is specific to the Jupiter Uranus event, right? Yeah. But it's still generalizing, right? Because it's, it's an energy that's affecting everybody. But if you understand your own personal chart and understand, you know, where is about 20 ish degrees of Taurus in my chart, you'll know, okay, well, Jupiter Uranus is activating that area of my life, whatever house that is. Mm -hmm. And you can spend a little bit more attention to that area of life, that pie slice of life reflected in that house and, and focus on that aspect in the visualization as well. That way you make it much more specific to, the area of your chart that it's activating for me it worked exactly like that last jupiter uranus was in my second house and back then yeah. I was poor as a church mouse <laughs> so everything you, you, was you started bar. rolling the bucks then huh yeah. i was like i have freedom to travel whatever i am you know, da, 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 da. digital nomad yes and it all happened and now i'm like Oh, I want to find a place to be settled in. Cows, <laughs> garden, fruit trees, <laughs> family things. That was my mom next to us, the kids. I was like, oh, this is like, I should be dreaming other big stuff. But no, that's what I want because it's my fourth house. 
That's interesting. Where Mine is, is half in, in the tenth. Pardon? Yours is in the tenth house, or? Yeah, it's uh, it's at the tail end of the tenth house, pretty much right on the cusp of the tenth and eleventh houses. So it kind of has one foot in one, one foot in the other. Um, so, and it's interesting now that you say that because I've been doing this meditation or a version of it recently too, in honor of this event, right? Yes. Um, and you know, everybody's vision is going to be different and unique to them. And mine was very community based. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting because I'm a hermit. I'm a hermit on steroids. You know, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a victory if I touch grass. You know, it, no, I'm just kidding. I'm, <laughs> I'm not that much of a hermit, but uh, yeah, it's I live off in the middle of nowhere. You know, yeah. but but my visualization was very much about connection with others through meditation to create sort of this connection of souls of consciousness you know to have a positive effect on the world and if you think about the 10th and 11th houses they both deal with the world with the community with a larger calling of mission yeah and so uh, you'll yeah. have a million or a few million followers within a few years <laughs> uh, that's funny yeah and the visualization i is so my YouTube channel name is Meditation Nexus. So I was visualizing Meditation Nexus and seeing the subscriber count go up. That was part of the community <laughs> part. But five, then it morphed minutes. into this symbol of like this energetic grid around planet Earth. Oh. You know, almost like ley lines, but in a different way, it's like souls connecting, you know, uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or millions of souls with a shared intention connecting through meditation. And then that energetic grid around the planet shooting up to the heavens, you know? Oh, brilliant. So that was like the imagery in my mind. It's like, how can we come together as a collective leveraging the power of meditation and shared intent for a positive effect on the world? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. And that word nexus means connection point between two or more things. And there's actually an origin story for the name of nexus because... Way back when I was a kid, I used to really enjoy online PC video games where I'd be competing against other people. And I don't know how much you know about the world of gaming, Lada, but if you're a gamer, you need a gamer tag or alias. Yes. So you go by that gamer name on the internet. And I was trying to join this clan within this game. So I was trying out and I was competing against the leader of the clan. And he says... Yeah, you know what? You're good enough to join the clan, but you got to change your name. It's a loser. And the name I was using was very creative. It was B. Coulter, okay? <laughs> which 13-year-old Brian thought, okay, my gamer alias would be cool if it was B. Coulter. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, you can join the clan, but you got to change your name. And I said, well, what do I change it to? You know, and give me some examples. And one of the examples he gave was Nexus. Oh. And little did I know, that Nexus was a popular hair brand. So, you know, you put hair, Nexus shampoo in and whatever. So everybody thought, you know, okay, Nexus probably isn't striking the fear into my competitors because I think I'm like a, a hair enthusiast or something like this. Uh, but anyway, so I was Nexus the gamer through my gaming career, if you will. Uh, and then later on, I realized you know, it has spiritual significance or meaning, a connection between two or more things. So I've brought the name back for Meditation Nexus because it's a connection between me and my voice and the meditation, a connection between me and you, the meditator, and then we make that connection to above, you know, forming the nexus. So mm. that's the origin of that. Beautiful. So. Thank you. And I love how you transferred your personal uh wishes and hopes for this 11th house into the collective for me at the end i saw the same people are coming from all over to develop food that is healthy that is uh, yes. nutritious that is full of vitamins not that it looks good i was imagining my house or farm is a hub for such kind of research and growth <laughs> yeah a lot of makes the best apples in all the land <laughs> we know where to go She's got that Aquarian genius. <laughs> she puts it into her ability to grow fruit. 
<laughs> oh my god am i gonna become a farmer instead of astrologer <laughs> and i can't grow a single thing i have one plant but oh, it's good to dream <laughs> And did you feel all those emotions when I said the word, When, as you were visualizing this future? Were you able to feel that in your heart? Oh, I was smiling all the time in my... Nice. It... That's the magic in this. Yes, the visualization of the mind is really important, but if you can also fuse the, medit the, the emotion of the heart with that visualization, that's where you really create the spell. I was, so facing the, I was laughing with the kids. I was mm -hmm. <laughs> everything like... Beautiful. So much. I guess people will be good if they want to repeat it a few times those days. Keep doing it. Keep this image, adding things, clarifying. If, I recommend once a day mm -hmm. um, for a chunk of time. It's good to do a meditation like this, kind of batch process it. Because if you do it once and never again, you'll feel better. I mean, you'll benefit from the meditation, but like you won't have put enough consistent energy into that spell, so to speak, to where it can really gain power and momentum to, to change the synchronistic wave in your life. It really depends on how well you can concentrate and visualize. Mm -hmm. That will also be a major factor or variable in like how long it takes before that spell gains power within your subconsciousness. But a good rule of thumb with a visualization like this is once a day for about two weeks, maybe even longer, you know, and each day you revisit it, you, you leverage the law of repetition and, uh, you, you add more detail and nuance to the vision each time you uh, return to it. And each time you do, it grows stronger and stronger and stronger within you. Yeah. Thank you so, so much, Brian. This was a pleasure, Lada. Thanks for having me back. May everyone have their wishes and dreams start manifesting this year and may god and your higher self take you in that direction open those uh, doors and portals for you that will take you to your authenticity excitement meaning unfolding your truth and thank you again for you brian for leading us to this um, incredible experience it was an honor thank you take care everybody